Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Bectera. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? You ever show your face around here again? Hmm, that's an interesting reaction. But I suppose it shouldn't surprise me. When dealing with the artifacts, common sense tends to go right out the window. <laughs> true, true. But hey, how else would you describe it? The artifacts are so different, so alien. And I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Well, judging from the fact that both you and Barrett claim to have heard music, I've made the leap that the artifact was reaching out. Music composition might not consist of words and sentences, but I'll be damned if that isn't an attempt at language. Agreed. Unfortunately, there's no way that I know of to reply, and believe me, I've been trying to gather data on the damn things for years. Oh, no, not at all. There's so much going on there, I can't afford to divert all of our resources. But I have classified the artifacts as a priority project. Frustrating? No. Bewildering? Yes. It would be... Oh, well, an explorer's dream to solve a mystery like this. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk, and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. Oh, oh my. Are you sure? That's... My gosh, it's so generous. Thank you so much. I'll be sure to put it away into savings for Tai. Maybe we can afford a better education for him. Or get off this planet someday. Then he won't have to work in the mines like his daddy. Thank you so much. If I can ever find a way to repay you, I will. How incredibly kind. I'm continuing to learn things about you. Good things. You're truly lucky to have a friend who shows such generosity to a total stranger. I'll never forget this. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. A reminder that bring your Something you need? Remember our last conversation when you told me the artifacts made your mind and body feel out of sync? Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Aja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Oh yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> now that you mention it, you're probably right. Either way, we logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. Honestly, it wasn't so much what Aja and I discovered in our travels. It was the journey that was memorable. We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but nothing SSNN would bother to report. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. Yeah, you know, being alone in interstellar space, nothing but light years of black around you. Some people find that terrifying. I find it comfortable. It helps me bond with my shipmates. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. No, she retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Oh, don't worry. There's no bad blood between us. The worst that might happen is you get stuck listening to two old friends catching up on old times. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, <laughs> that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I, I, I have to go. I'm listening. Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation, and it's given me a lot to think about. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a list of requests. Things I would normally handle if I was there. <sighs> but I'm not. I'm out here instead with you. You're not keeping me out here. I am. Just... Here, let me explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps, until the UC decided to axe the department. Yeah, I suppose painful is an appropriate way to put it. You see, the top brass demanded press-worthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. Oh, like hell I can't. You once told me that you favoured the journey over the destination. So I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. If I had fought harder, I'm convinced our division may have had a chance to prove its value. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Well, 
that brings us to this message now, doesn't it? Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> it's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority, but all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Matteo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh, here you are trying to help me and I'm yelling at you. <sighs> you have to understand. Once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have feelings for me. It's just... I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you. It's me. I'm just not ready to get that close. I can't. Not now. But thank you for being there and listening. It helped. It really did. I have an important personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the colony war broke out, I was posted as the chief navigator on a warship, the Dauntless. Well, the position didn't last long. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Ata Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost 12 ships that day. 12. Including my own. Economic reasons. Several of the worlds in the Cassiopeia system were mineral rich. Both sides wanted to drop refinery outposts on the surface to bolster their supply. No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship. But I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. <sighs> I believe you. But you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours. But the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were... spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn... So eager to prove that I could handle command. <sighs> My crew would have had more time to escape. Try telling that to their loved ones. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. After I checked every section of the ship for wounded crew, I took the other escape shuttle. If I hadn't, I would have died. 
The Dauntless came apart minutes after I escaped. Bad luck. That sounds familiar. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about us. Look, it's clear the two of us are becoming more than partners. We're becoming close friends. Even though I've pushed people away in the past, I feel different when I'm around you. I feel safer, comfortable, not afraid to admit who I am. I'm terrified I'm going to screw that up. After everything you've heard, all my stories, you still have faith. No one's ever cared about me this much. Not even Aja. You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about us, about our relationship, how we've clearly become close. I practiced what I was going to say when the moment was right and now that it's here, my mind's gone blank. <laughs> ah. Look, you deserve the best. Someone who can give themselves to you entirely. But right now, I have too much baggage. Too much on my mind. I hope you'll forgive me for pushing you away. I just need time. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. The last time I saw my crew, their escape shuttle was headed for the planet's surface. I need to find the wreckage to ensure their memories are honored. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. The Dauntless took heavy fire to the docking section during the battle. We had three shuttles. One was destroyed, and the other two were damaged. There was no other way off the ship. Shortly after I evacuated, I saw the ship come apart. The UC listed it as lost, so I assume the Dauntless was completely destroyed. was there to tell. I survived. My crew didn't. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I had no other choice. Don't worry, it's not as though I'm coming apart at the seams. It's the conversations we've been having. They dredged up these old memories and they're... a burden. It has a breathable atmosphere, indigenous fauna, and maybe a few abandoned mining outposts. Otherwise, it's not populated. 
My shuttle should have the telemetry tracking data for the other shuttle aboard. It should give us an idea where... it went down. That's if scavengers haven't completely stripped my ship for parts. Hold on. I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look, I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. Besides bad memories? I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it. Not yet. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, I'll never understand. I... I don't know what to say. Ah, oh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just... not ready. Not yet. Traveling out here with you, I've discovered that friendships change by circumstance. I worked closely with Aja on long space voyages, so we became friendly. When she quit Constellation, the friendship ended. But I'm certain at this point, even if you and I were separated by a great distance, we'd never lose touch. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Admiral Logan sooner rather than later. Admiral Logan's office shouldn't be terribly far. Let's go. Sarah Morgan. It's been, what, almost ten years? Admiral, it's, uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help. That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway? Very well. Then, as a good friend, perhaps you could kindly explain to me why I shouldn't have the both of you escorted from the building. With all due respect, Admiral, this is ridiculous. 
If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I understand. Mental scars left by war rarely heal quickly, if ever at all. I sympathize with your struggle, Commander. I want to put an end to the sleepless nights. The nightmares waking up in cold sweat. It's been difficult, Admiral. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to you, Slades. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. We should make sure we're well supplied for the trip to Cassiopeia. Feels like walking into a dream. Oh, it's been nearly 20 years, but it feels like a lifetime. Strangely, this place looks exactly the same as I remember it. But that isn't possible, right? Just like a dream. Oh, thank you. Right now, I feel like I need all the help that I can get. Phew. Okay, so, let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. Yes, exactly. Since most of my gear was destroyed, I depended on those landmarks to orient myself while I was stranded. Ah. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, we'll use that as a starting point to search for the crew's shuttle wreckage. <sighs> Let's go. some debris from my shuttle. Not exactly a textbook landing, but I didn't have much of a choice. Well, this is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? I never said I walked away. <sighs> when my ship hard landed on the surface, it broke apart. There was no fire, but I was... Well, I was pretty badly injured. Had to crawl from the wreckage. When they finally rescued me, the UC medics said I had three broken ribs, shattered my ulna, and had internal organ damage. 
I was in the medical ward, recovering for almost six weeks. I'm surprised you've never heard of the place. It's a resort colony in the Parima system. You know, a place to get away and unwind? Maybe we should head out there after we're done. Goodness knows we'll both need a vacation. It was... difficult and painful. But it kept me alive. It was home. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, we have plenty of power cells on the ship, but they're not UC military grade. They won't work. I'm afraid we'll have to do some scrounging. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing. Maybe you can get that to point us to the nearest restaurant. Aha. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. Don't even joke. If this data is faulty, and we end up being pointed to a pile of rocks, oh, I don't even know what we'd do next. I'm fairly certain I was able to capture all the data before I hit the ground. I'll try not to worry about it if you won't. Well, we're not there yet, but damn, it does feel good. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going. Oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen. It's all here. Had I been on this planet under more pleasant circumstances, I might have had more time to appreciate the beauty it has to offer. I'll shoot if I have to. Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go! I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? The crew? No one's been looking for that crew since before I was born. So tell me another lie. Go ahead. You were born here? Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents? Your mum and your dad, what were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberist. You're their... daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mum and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. I know this is Cass... Cassiopeia. I've been here since I was born. I know my mother and father were from Gemson or something like that. I bet it's like a thousand miles away. 
When my parents told me she was in command of their ship in a huge battle. They said she was a hero and the bravest person they ever knew. Yeah? Well, I wish you wouldn't have taken so long. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago. And my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now, all by myself. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona. <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona, you mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces like the ones my mom and dad had hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. Phew. I don't even know where to begin. I'm trying to hold it together. There's just too much coming at me all at once, you know? I'm just so relieved that you're here. There's absolutely no way I could have handled this alone. Yeah. This isn't what I expected. At all. Oh, there's so much to process. But I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory.
So now, calm down and listen to me. It's much too dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. We can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I knew I could depend on you. Now all we have to do is convince this poor girl that she's better off leaving the planet with us. I just... I don't know if I have it in me to say the right things. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm clearly out of my element here and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Sarah, listen to me. I mean, I mean, kinda. I just met her. The only reason I'm trusting you at all is because my mom and dad said Sarah was a good person. I know she probably wants to help me out, but I really wish you'd listen to my part of the story. I've been alone for a long time. And even when bad people visit, I've been safe. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? Mom and Dad told me there was a whole universe out there, with thousands of planets. They showed me the maps and the star charts. That does sound pretty cool, but well, it's also kind of scary. It would be hard to leave the only home I've ever known. Mom told me there were really bad people out there. Worse than the ones I've already seen. But uh, leaving mom and dad behind, it's really hard. Even though they're dead. I don't want to abandon them. I am safe. Those monsters can't catch me. They've tried, but I learned how to trick them. They're pretty dumb. And if bad people visit here, I know how to hide. I was even watching you when you landed. I bet you didn't even see me. This planet doesn't bother me. That's why I'm not sure I need to abandon my mom and dad. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get, well, wherever we're going. That poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. Oh, I do hope that's true. We're ripping Sona from the only home she's ever known and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. Thank you. Look, um... Before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go. It's tough to pack up a lifetime of memories. <laughs> Give me some time. Don't worry. I'll 
сделали. Before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. And I intend to repay you for that, even if it takes the rest of my life. You know... This is the second time I've been on this world, and until this very moment, I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes, wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? Ah, <sighs> well. I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. Addie? I served my time in the fleet, but were I a younger man, I'd be back out there now. Welcome back. Did you find your answers? And we did it for the child that was marooned there. A child, born from two of the crew, that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world, alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known? Sona. Is that her name? She must be a remarkable young woman. She's extraordinary, Admiral. And I'm afraid the United Colonies let her down. You're absolutely right, Sarah. We did let her down. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the Lodge. service, Captain. I cannot wait to meet her. It's been ages since I've been here. Just go easy on them. Being a terrier, like... I guess we need to talk. There you are. 
I was wondering when he'd come and say hi to me. Hello, Sona. I see you found your way to the lodge without any trouble. Yeah, it was kind of hard though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. Sarah gave me directions. She's really good at that. Riding that gnat thing was super cool. It was like magic or something. Like something from the stories mom used to read. But the hardest part was having everyone staring at me. All these people in one place. It's kind of scaring me. I don't know why. <laughs> they sure won't. They have to catch me first. It's true. You're one of the toughest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Whoa. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait, do I get my own ship? Exactly. And this is the perfect place to begin your education. I understand. Oh, and don't worry. I learn real fast. So you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. Your mom dropped by. We had a nice chat. She, uh, left this note for you. Look at this. All these people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. You're probably right. That's why I keep you around. To hold my head above water and give me a swift kick in the arse once in a while. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here and then we can head over to the waterfall so we can talk in private. I'm ready. Let's go. It's lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I 
I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other. But this place, this exact spot, there's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. I, I don't know. I'm not sure I can explain it. Maybe it's the strange way that the art, technology, and nature fuse together, or... Maybe it's because it feels like home. Whatever it is, I definitely feel more comfortable here than anywhere else I've ever been. I hadn't thought of it that way. But you're absolutely right. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. That's actually why I asked you to meet me up here. <clears throat> I was hoping we could talk about something very important. Good, because I have a lot to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy, but that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. Maybe, but for how long? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, <laughs> hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. Are you sure? For all we know, it's in my nature to keep people at arm's length. Or worse, push them away. Finding someone like that would be... wonderful. Wait a second. What exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. Sorry, I, um, I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. I know you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel... complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. When things... I'd like to speak to you.